tuberous sclerosis complex is a disorder um, that often runs in families, so it is a genetic disorder uh, that uh, can affect almost virtually every organ system. The two most frequently affected organ systems are the skin and the brain, and in about 85% of folks that have TS um, have skin and brain involvement. But in addition to the skin and the brain, almost every organ system can be involved. We believe that early diagnosis of tuberous sclerosis is very important um, because we know that recognition of the symptoms and signs of TS often lead to more effective early treatments. Different manifestations of TSC can occur at different points throughout the lifetime. And some of the most um, severe consequences uh, of TSC can occur in infancy. So it's important to get diagnosis as early as possible so that the appropriate surveillance and, and monitoring can be done in a clinical setting to catch the first signs of, of any of the potential manifestations of TSC. The people with tuberous sclerosis, probably 70% have onset of seizures the first year of life. And for many of those children, they then grow up to have significant cognitive impairment or mental retardation. Um, and what we have looked at and others have looked at is that how effectively and how soon the seizures are treated uh, can have a significant impact on how the children do subsequently. Uh, so if we see a child and we can very quickly identify their seizures, appropriately treat the seizures, then that's a child who could end up doing very well developmentally, um, whereas if the seizures continued, that child may have significant cognitive impairment. The TS programs around the United States, most of them are run now by neurologists, and that's because the majority of both children and adults with tuberous sclerosis do have neurologic involvement. Um, but because of the other organ system involvement, kidney, lung, skin, heart, eye, um, I think that having a general approach to thinking about all the different possible manifestations is ideal. So I would like to have, as a person living with TS, I would like to have at least one physician who understood the disorder and knew what possible things might happen at any age I might be. Um, in the perfect world, in addition to that one knowledgeable physician, if I had kidney involvement, it'd be great to have a knowledgeable kidney doctor. If I had significant skin involvement, it'd be great to have a skilled dermatologist. Um, but if I only had just that one physician who knew what my problems were and what they could be um, and had ways to refer me to any physician I might need for various manifestations, then that would be ideal. TSC clinics are typically multidisciplinary clinics um, that take care of children and also hopefully adults with TS. Uh, meeting all the possible different aspects of the care. Those are clinics that have a specialized knowledge and expertise in tuberous sclerosis complex. Many are run by neurologists, um, and many of the programs are now run by child neurologists. Um, so you can feel that the neurologic care, treating the seizures, the possible autism, the cognitive impairment, the behavioral aspects could be addressed. Um, but the benefit of the clinics is that it's overall these institutions or clinics have a heightened awareness of the various manifestations of TSE. Uh, so they also carry the expertise with regard to possible kidney manifestations, skin manifestations, the lung manifestations, et cetera. So really providing more of a holistic approach under the care of an individual with TSC. Physicians can find out if there are clinics available in their area. I think the best mechanism is through contacting the TS Alliance, uh, which has a very active uh, interaction and relationship with the various clinics and could help identify um, clinics in that person's area.
The newly updated guidelines for TSC are intended to help physicians understand what's the most recent uh, data-based recommendations for how to appropriately diagnose TSC and then how to monitor people throughout their lifetime and then how to treat it, the, the various manifestations of TSC. The guidelines were originally developed in 1998 when much less was known about TSC and they were most recently updated in 2012 when we brought together many physicians from around the world to, uh, to give their recommendations on the, the best way to diagnose, monitor, and treat tuberous sclerosis complex. The updated guidelines will help healthcare providers by giving the most recent recommendations based on data in the scientific literature on how to diagnose and how to monitor and how to treat those with TSC, especially first-line physicians who won't see many cases of this um, on a regular basis. Maybe they haven't seen it at all, uh, but this gives them a place to turn to where they can get recommendations from those physicians who understand the disease and who have dug into the medical literature. If a physician were looking to see what were the current and updated guidelines for following any aspect of TS or an individual with TS, um, I would suggest that they look at the medical literature um, because with recent consensus conference guidelines will be published and I think if that is difficult uh, to do or I'm not successful in finding information that way, uh, then I would direct people to the Tuber Sclerosis Alliance because really as an organization one of their missions is to keep the medical care professionals and community up to date uh, with our current understanding of TSC and our current recommendations for following folks living with it. So a physician could look on the TS Alliance website where we have a link for physicians and healthcare providers and we would provide not only a summary of the guidelines but also links to the peer-reviewed publications where they can read for themselves the data behind the guidelines and why they were done the way they were.